Hi everyone, thank you for joining me at ARM Dev Summit 2021. My name is Ajit Singh Rena, and I have with me my co-speaker Meg Makwana. The title of today's session is all about building end-to-end cloud-native computer vision application at Edge. First, a little about myself. I am working as a developer relation manager at Redis. I am part of ARM Innovator Program and a Docker Captain too. Meg, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Ajit. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Meg, and I work as a senior solutions architect at NVIDIA. My work primarily revolves around working with customers ranging from enterprise to government and others in accelerating their machine learning and deep learning workflows using GPU technologies. So with that, let me get started with today's presentation. Today, we are seeing an Cambrian explosion of solutions in the market, leveraging technologies like computer vision, speech, natural language processing, which at the very core leverages algorithms like deep neural networks for solving these problems at scale. Be it for doing analytics using camera feeds in cities, buildings, or even public areas like airports, station, or others. Or it could also be the smart retail store next to you like Amazon Go in UK and US. Or you could also see that there are different conferencing tools like Teams and Google Meet where they essentially record all your transcripts which has been spoken during the meeting itself. All these tools are essentially helping users to make the best use out of their data and to provide insights to the end stakeholders. We also see multiple use cases like call centers where rather than supporting the customers directly by the human, we can leverage technologies like chat and voice bot support for attending to the customers on the first level. All these technologies are increasing the adoption of AI or rather machine learning and deep learning today. Now, building these end-to-end -end pipelines at scale is an extremely challenging process. Today, we are seeing a rapid adoption of cloud-native technologies like containerization, which eases the process of setup, management, and deployment of highly scalable microservices. Especially for deep learning workflows, which are quite compute intensive, managing the right set of system level packages like CUDA runtime, toolkit, and other application-specific CUDA X libraries, in our case, which is associated with deep learning like QDNN, Nickel, Cutlass, and others for optimal performance have become extremely critical. Additionally, we have other artifacts like the model repository and other helm charts, which also play a very important role. We have packaged all these components onto a unified centralized platform called as NVIDIA NGC. It is a centralized repository where we maintain latest GPU accelerated application containers, pre-trained models, hand charts, so that developers out there can get started with the deep learning journey. These images work with different container runtimes like Docker, Singularity, and others, and also have support for different hardware architectures like ARM, x86, Power, etc. A typical deep learning Deep neural network training requires large volume of data. And most of the time we see that this amount, this much amount of data is not usually available with organizations from the very start. And that's exactly where leveraging pre-trained models becomes extremely important. On our NGC platform, you can find a wide variety of pre-trained models for doing tasks like image classification, detection, segmentation, speech recognition, speech synthesis, and natural language processing. All these pre-trained models can be pulled directly from NGC and can further be used for fine tuning on your limited amount of labeled data and still achieve desirable metrics. And that's exactly where our Tau toolkit comes into the picture. The Tau toolkit that you see at the very center essentially helps users to leverage these pre-trained models and fine tune to get the best results. 
Additionally, it also provides further optimization techniques like kernel and layer fusion, CUDA kernel auto-tuning, precision calibration to run these models on lower precisions like floating point 16 and integer 8 using techniques like PTQ which stands for post-training quantization as well as QAT which stands for quantized aware training. Further, when these models are trained and provides the desirable metrics and are highly optimized for inferencing, it becomes extremely important to plug them in the end-to-end -end video analytics pipeline. And that's exactly where DeepStream comes into the picture. DeepStream is basically a platform built on top of GStreamer, which essentially allows you to put GPU accelerated plugins within a GStreamer pipeline. Now, before we get started uh, into more details about what DeepStream is, let's first try to understand the different challenges associated with streaming deep learning applications. On a high level, there are three core challenges that we need to take care of. The first one is the design complexity, because today there are multiple frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and other deployment frameworks like Onyx and TensorRT, which can be used for training and deploying these models. There are also multiple tool chains and programming languages that can be leveraged for training and deploying these models as well. The second problem is how do we optimize the TCO? That means how do we provide everything right from highly optimized pre-trained models to optimization techniques that can further reduce the precision and, and apply those optimizations that we talked about so that you can easily take these models and deploy them on edge systems. And the third and the most important thing is how can we have one unified code base for multiple targets, be it x86, be it ARM, or be it any other target architecture. And considering all these core challenges in mind, we essentially built DeepStream. DeepStream is basically our streaming platform, which essentially enables you to move multiple parts of a streaming applications on top of GPUs. To give you a few examples, in a AI streaming application, you will see that there are multiple steps, starting from the different sensors like cameras and others, where you're trying to basically ingest the input video and audio feeds then you essentially capture and decode these feeds. Further, you need to apply some kind of pre-processing technique on top of these feeds. And then you basically call your deep learning model for doing the inference. Once the inferencing is done, you would want to apply some kind of post-processing techniques. These post-processing techniques can be further split it down into different pipelines like tracking, business rule and analytics and further taking all of these and composing the insights that come out of these metadata that has been generated by the post-processing step and then putting them into one unified view. Now let's talk a bit about the DeepStream SDK. If you look at the very bottom, you can notice that DeepStream is essentially platform agnostic. That means it can either work on Jetson appliances, which is based on the ARM architecture, or it could also run on x86 systems as well. On top of this, you basically have core system level softwares like CUDA X, which essentially contains the entire platform for accelerating deep neural networks, leveraging the CUDA platform, or rather the parallel computing paradigm. On top of CUDA X, you essentially have different capabilities that we provide. Starting with the development environment. You can either develop this in Python or in C++, or you can also use our latest capability in DeepStream 6, which is Graph Composer for building the DeepStream pipeline. Below this, you have additional capabilities of accelerated plugins, extensions, pre-trained models that we discussed, capabilities of going over the air update Helm charts and IoT messaging as well. Uh, and this entirely 
essentially enables people to build their turnkey applications using DeepStream SDK. Some of the key features that I really want to just do a touchdown is that it have support for different AI frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, Tensorati, and others. And it also has the ease of development use by allowing to the users to develop these applications using either C++, Python, or even the Graph Composer. Most of the performance is uh, managed via the topology, uh, on top of which the DeepStream application is going to sit. It also has interoperability for IoT use on different platforms using different protocols like MQTT, Kafka, Azure IoT, AWS Greengrass, and it also integrates very well with the Redis platform. There are also support of other platforms like Jetson, the enterprise GPUs like the A100 and T4s and Quadros. We also provide object tracking mechanism like NVDCF, KLT and IOU, which are built natively in DeepStream. Now, a typical workflow would look like this. You would pull a pre-trained model from NGC, leverage the Tau or the Transfer Learning Toolkit for further fine-tuning these pre-trained model on your limited amount of labeled data set and apply different optimization techniques that we discussed previously using the TensorRT compiler. Now, you take this production-ready model and you plug it within the cloud-native DeepStream application. Now, DeepStream can do inferencing via two methods. The first method is to do inferencing via the uh, NV DeepStream Infer plugin, which leverages TensorRT, or it also can use NVDS server, which leverages the Triton as the very backend to serve models either in Onyx, PyTorch, or TensorFlow. And then you basically get the metadata out of these video feeds and you can essentially take that metadata and pass it to pass it further onto different iot platforms that ajit will be discussing in the upcoming slides so with this i would like to hand over the presentation to ajit yeah thanks meg so we talked a lot about ai workflow and streaming ai apps but what brings ai computing closer to edge and that's where your jetson come into the picture Jetson brings AI computing to everyone. It's a world leading platform for AI at the edge. It's high performance, low power computing for deep learning and computer vision makes it an ideal platform for compute intensive projects. So Jetson is basically a system in module designed from ground up with high performance and embedded GPU for the computation power. It comes with various form factor and the one you see on the screen is Nvidia Jetson AGX Xavier developer kit so the most important thing about the jetson module is they come with the same software architecture if you really want to use systems for manufacturing delivery and retail do check out nvidia jetson agx xavier developer kit with this powerful kit you can easily uh, easily deploy and create end-to-end -end ai robotics platform AGX Xavier runs Linux and it provides you with 32 teraops of compute performance. It comes with octa-core NVIDIA Carmel, which is ARM-based CPU and operate at 2.26 gigahertz. Now, if you talk about, uh, uh, if you talk, if, if you have a closer look at NVIDIA Jetson software stack, as we mentioned earlier, NVIDIA Jetson devices are supported by the same NVIDIA software stack, which enables you to develop once and deploy everywhere. So at the bottom of the stack, we have Jetson Developer Kit. Sitting on top of it, we have NVIDIA Jetson SDK. This is the most comprehensive solution for building AI application. It bundles your Jetson platform software, including TensorRT, CUDA, VisionWorks, GStreamer, and OpenCV all built on top of LTS Linux kernel. Jetpack includes the NVIDIA container runtime enabling cloud native technologies and workflow at the edge. Right on top of Jetson SDK, we have NVIDIA DeepStream SDK that delivers a complete 
streaming analytics toolkit for your AI based multi sensor processing videos and image understanding. On the right hand side, you see that NVIDIA Isaac SDK, which makes it easy for developers to create and deploy AI powered robotics. These tools and APIs accelerate your robotic development by making it really easier to add an artificial intelligence for perception and navigation into robots. If you look at the latest NVIDIA Jetpack, it bundles all your development tools, which is required to develop for the Jetson platform. Now let's go ahead and spend some time uh, in understanding how edge to cloud integration really works. So once you deploy your AI application to the edge closer to your sensor, you may be able to get your metadata for the edge to the cloud. And this could be an inference results, health of device or any logs. So DeepStream provides you with a turnkey integration of various open IoT protocols, as well as it integrates with the leading cloud service providers, which we call as CSPs. It provides a configurable message broker library to handle your all IoT messaging. Users can select from open protocols such as Kafka or MQTT, and they have an option to add their own custom protocols. You can use Kafka or MQTT to send messages to any private or public crowd. On the flip side, if you really want to use the managed services from AWS to Azure, you can also use DeepStream to directly send messages to the cloud services. DeepStream integrates really well with Azure IoT to send the secure message to Microsoft Azure, where you can use various cloud services in Azure. DeepStream also integrates with through uh, it integrates well with AWS through AWS IoT Greengrass, which allows you to use the cloud services in AWS. It also provides a multi-edge to cloud options for DevOps managing their own services or using the managed service from CSPs. Now, this is another slide which talks about a simplified example of how Redis can communicate with the Python app that is processing the metadata created by the DeepStream app. Now, if you look at the new DeepStream 6.0, it comes integrated with NVIDIA RiverMax, allowing you with uh, GPU direct for inbound data. The Python app can reside on the cloud or even in the same system where DeepStream app is running. The Redis message broker, it creates a connection with the Redis consumer within the app, uh, within the, the Python app, and it shares the metadata for the apps to consume. Now, in this example, the metadata is being used to create a people counting app and it stores such information into a database. Now, uh, next, we have a, a demo time. And uh, Meg, can you go ahead and showcase uh, a super cool demo around AI face mask based detection system? Sure. Thanks, Ajit. With this, uh, let's get started with the demo. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of building containerized workflows for doing GPU accelerated computer vision on top of ARM based systems. The system that we'll be using today is based on the ARM architecture and named as NVIDIA Jetson Xavier HEX. We would first want to see what kind of an operating system is running on top of this system? As you can see, it's mentioned the operating system being used is Jetpack 4.5.1. Jetpack is an operating system built on top of Ubuntu for ARM and packaged with all the necessary pre-compiled packages and libraries to do GPU accelerated computing on top of this device. This utility is extremely helpful to find the CPU utilization, memory usage, GPU utilization, as well as disk utilization. There are also other metrics like power, sensor temperature, and hardware engines, which is also important for use, different use cases. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the GitHub repository that we are going to use for today's demonstration. This GitHub repository has step-by-step -step process of getting started 
with computer vision workflows on top of Jetson devices. As you can see here that there are different Jetson devices available which can be leveraged for deploying this project. Right from Jetson Nano to TX1, TX2, Xavier NX and HX Xavier. One of the most important part of this repository is leveraging TensorRT and DeepStream for optimizing these models on embedded platform leveraging different optimization techniques like graph optimization, kernel auto tuning and precision calibration for converting your deep neural networks from FP32 to lower precisions like FP16 and integer 8. In computer vision, you'll notice that there are multiple use cases right from image classification to object detection, semantic segmentation, pose estimation and depth estimation. All these use cases leverage deep neural networks based on convolution neural networks and are extremely compute hungry. To deploy these on these Jetson devices, it's important to set up the application environment. To set up the application environment, you can either go via the container route or you can also build the project from scratch. For this tutorial, we'll be referring to running the Docker container process. There are also detailed guides on how you can build your own program for doing image classification, detection, as well as segmentation, pose estimation, and depth estimation. There are also tutorials that show how you can leverage PyTorch and basically to transfer learning using models like ResNet 18 and SSD mobile net for object detection. As you might be aware, running containers require you to have a container image in place. The container image which is used as a base for running these workloads is based on the NVIDIA's L40 PyTorch image. This is our central repository of all the containers that we have built for the Jetson devices. You can simply type in L40 and you can find all the different container images which are available that can be used on any Jetson device. Right from PyTorch, to TensorFlow, to TensorRT, or even a simple container like L40 CUDA, or even DeepStream, or even leveraging these different demos which are also available over here. The container image that we'll be using for today's tutorial is the Dusty NV slash Jetson inference R32.5.0 because we are using Jetpack 4.5. Now let's go ahead and run this particular container. The steps are pretty straightforward. You simply git clone this repository, do a CD within the directory and issue the docker slash run dot sh command. This will set up the container image and it will also mount the appropriate directories which are required within the container. Now let's go back to our terminal and issue this command. As you can see, I've already pulled the Jetson inference GitHub repository, and now I'm going to run my Docker image. As you could see that we are already running our Docker image. This Docker image is dusty nv slash Jetson hyphen inference r32.5.0. And there are multiple directories which are mounted. Two of the directories which are important for today's use case is the input and the output directory. As you can see, within the input directory, there is a folder called as images and has multiple images that we'll be using for today's demonstration. Just to confirm, we are going to also check if there are any images available in the output folder. As you can see, there are no images present in the output folder. Second, to visualize these input and outputs, we'll be using Jupyter Lab to visualize the input and output in a much better way.
As you can see, there is a simple IPython notebook over here that I'll be using for today's demonstration. It will simply plot all the images present in the input slash images folder. So these are all the images which were present in that particular folder. So there are about 66 images which are present. Now what we are going to do is we are going to run the inference process. So to run the inference, you can basically leverage these different utilities which are available within the build. Arc 64 and bin directory. You'll see that there are multiple. C++ compiled executable as well as Python files that you can use for doing either image classification, detection or segmentation. Now I'm going to use one of the utility which is DetectNet, which is one of the object detection models which leverages the SSD model and for doing object detection. So let's use the uh, DetectNet and using this, I'm going to pass in the input images that I had in that particular folder. I'm going to use all the JPEG images, all 60 out of them for and I'm going to redirect the output of those images in the slash output slash images folder and I'm going to name them as output underscore. Percent I dot JPG. As you can see, it's now loading the model, which is the SSD mobile net V2. And the inferencing is happening using the Tensorati compiler. You can also notice that there are detailed timing report with respect to the pre-processing time. The network execution time. This is where we are performing the forward propagation. The post processing time as well as the visualization and the total time. As you can see, each of these images took approximately about 16 milliseconds for doing the inference. And most of the time was performed in the network execution. That means during the forward pass of this model. Now we are quickly going to look at the results generated by this this model. And as you can see, these were just created a minute ago. And now I'm going to display the output of these images. As you can see, all these images basically have the bounding box. The name of the class to which this object belongs to as well as its corresponding output score. As you can see, it has completed the detection with very high probability and is accurately able to build the bounding boxes. You can also further take this tutorial and run it on top of videos as well. When you'll be running the DetectNet on top of videos, you'll be leveraging DeepStream SDK for doing end to end inference. And which is basically going to reduce the overall execution time on top of your Jetson devices. With that, we are going to end this tutorial. Thank you so much for being part of the tutorial. Have a nice day. Okay, so there is a live Q&A session starting now to continue the conversation. To take part, join us on Zoom by clicking the yellow button just below the video player on the sessions page.